How many know when the Holy Spirit takes over, God could do anything? So, um, um, bless Pastor Marco. And I heard one day LA was a great success. We got to do that more often. You guys left an anointing in Los Angeles. You know how I know? The Dodgers just got Max Serger. Best pitcher in baseball. The, the Lakers just got Westbrook. Uh, you guys left a serious anointing over there. <laughs> got to have them more. Sorry, Padres. You guys are trying to get Max Serger. Sorry. How many Padre fans? I'll pray, I'll pray for you after service, okay? You guys are supposed to get Serger and the Dodgers just took him from you. Remember, the California team is always will be the Dodgers. Never forget that. And the Lakers will always be the California team. Sorry, Clipper fans. But... I'm happy to be here. For the ones that are first time, I'm the associate pastor, Pastor Robert. And, uh, me and my wife and our family were on vacation for a couple of weeks. And um, one of our members, um, they gave us a villa um, to stay at. Um, you know who you are. And um, my family will be forever grateful. You blessed our family. We we're, were able just to relax for a minute. Because those, those months I was in Mexico going to Pomona, trying to establish these two churches. I was in Pomona probably six days a week. And these churches have launched. These churches have launched. Um, I got my eyes on L.A. now. We got to get to Inglewood. We got to get to Compton as fast as we can. We got to get to um, Oakland as fast as we can. Um, so there's some, uh, we got to get to Stockton as fast as we can. There are some cities that God has placed on our hearts. And and I want to thank you guys for being a part of this great ministry. Pat, um, Kurt did a great job. Give Kurt a hand on giving. Great, phenomenal job. Thank you for that. I was really blessed by that. Are you guys ready for the word of God? Are you guys ready? Go to James. Go to the book of James. We are in a series right now going through the book of James. Who is James? Who is James? Anybody know? Who was he? Or who is he? He was Jesus' brother. Yeah, you can say half-brother. That's right, because Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Um, but he was um, Jesus' brother. Um, I love the book of James. It happens to be one of my favorite books because it's just straight black and white. This is how you need to live. This is how you need to talk. This is how you need to act. How many just are blessed by the book of James? If you haven't read it, dive into the book of James. Go with me to James chapter 1. Um, we're going verse by verse. Pastor Marco spoke on last week. I seen it out when I was in Mexico, talking about trouble and times, how to get through trouble and times. And you know, when you, when you read the Word of God, when you go verse by verse, chapter by chapter, now, it, it, I mean, in our language, yeah, and in English, we have periods there, and there's grammar, of course, and the Bible has the best grammar, the best history. Um, but a lot of times, you could take away the, the, the periods, and you could just put a comma. It's a continuation. So if you can, go to James chapter 1, and I'll give you the title after I read the scripture. But I want to keep this scripture in good context. So James chapter 1, go to verse 2. This is a scripture that Pastor Marco mentioned last week. If you weren't here, you got to go on the app. you got to get caught up. you got to hear the message from last week. But to keep this portion of scripture in context, I want to read verse 2. Then I'm going to go down to verse 5. Look at verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters... When troubles of any kind come your way. Anybody want to be honest in this place? Does anybody want to say, I'm going through a trouble or a trial or a problem right now? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Pastor Mark, I think you mentioned last week or the week before, there's only a few groups of people in this room. One, you're in a trial right now. You're in a difficult season right now. Or you just got out of a difficult season. How many just got out of a difficult season? That's the second group. Here's the third group. Another trouble is coming. You're about to go back in for round 12. Because it's life. Until we get to heaven, we're living in an imperfect world. We have crazy people doing crazy things. How... Someone asked you, well, babe, why, why did God allow that? To God, there's crazy people. I wasn't God. I was a crazy person who did that. So it's not if you're going to go through a problem. It's when. I'm sorry to say, California, it's not if we're going to have a massive earthquake. I'm scaring people. I better stop. 
It's when. It's coming. The, the, California goes through hundreds uh, of earthquakes every month. Hundreds. A big one. It's not if. It's when. And that's why we go to church. That's why we go to discipleship class. That's why we go to P12. To prepare us for what lies ahead. How many want to be prepared? I love it. You guys played sports. I played sports. A bad coach doesn't get his team prepared. A good coach gets their team prepared. So when troubles come, consider it great joy. Now let's go down to verse 5. This is where we're going to land for today. Go down to verse 5, but I want to keep that scripture in context. Go to verse 5. If you need wisdom, my gosh, I need wisdom. How many need wisdom? About 80 of you guys, okay, or 80%, okay. If you need wisdom, what do we do? We ask our generous God. He'll give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. They go back and forth. It's like a yo-yo, back and forth, back and forth. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and between the world. And they are unstable in everything they do. Here's the title for today. Jot this down. If you're not a note taker, you got to become a note taker. Get a phone, put it on your phone, your tablet, do something. Here's the title. Get wisdom. Everything depends on it. Get wisdom. Everything depends on it. Get wisdom. Everything depends on it. We're living in a world and a society now. If we do not have the divine wisdom from God, we will make some serious mistakes. I don't know about you. I do not. I don't have time. I don't have time. The talk. The clock is ticking. My kids are growing up. Gosh, I got a daughter who's going to be a junior starting tomorrow. My daughter Mariah is going to be a junior. I remember we took her home from the hospital from Loma Linda. Now she's driving. We need wisdom. My kids start school tomorrow. They're walking into a time bomb tomorrow. They got to get there at 7 o'clock in the morning to go home to high school. 7 o'clock to get a temperature check. Temperature is a little off. You're going right back home, baby. You ain't staying here. You start coughing in class. They already told us. They have isolation rooms set up at Cajon High School. You'll be taken to the isolation room. Kind of like Monsters, Inc. <laughs> Coming with the suits and... Tonight, I'm laying hands on my kids, getting ready for school. They need wisdom. I need wisdom as a parent how we're going to navigate through this. Pastor Marco, continue, pray, pray. We need divine wisdom how to navigate a church in one of the darkest, perilous times that you and I have ever seen. We need divine wisdom from God. How many need wisdom from the Lord? Hey, you're a business owner. In this season, you don't have divine wisdom. Your business is not going to make it. We need divine wisdom. I need wisdom more than ever to guide my family, to help Pastor Marco guide the church. And now launch it out. I just, when I, when I was in Mexico, I finally got to breathe for a second. And then when I was flying back, my heart started beating. <laughs> And we're flying into Los Angeles. Here we go. It's round two right now. We got a church in Pomona. We got a church in TJ. We got a church that developed in Kenya. And now there's other things we're going to do. We need wisdom. See, I want you to write this down. 
in a troubled season to keep this again to keep this scripture in context if you have a trouble the greatest need in trouble is wisdom that's your greatest need but I, not, me when I'm going through a trouble the first thing I do is this <laughs> take me out of this problem <laughs> right we go to a prayer of escape rather than as a prayer for wisdom. I think Pastor Marco mentioned that a little bit last week. Lord, get me out of here. And I understand it's okay to say that. God is a restorer. God is a healer. But now, God, what's your wisdom behind me getting cancer, for an example? Somebody in this room, you have cancer. And the question is, why? 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 What's going on? God, heal me. God, do this. That's good. Let's go a little deeper. God, what are you trying to do right now? What are you trying to teach me right now? I remember when I got diagnosed with achalasia. Look it up when you got time. It's a horrible, horrible sickness. Horrible, horrible. I got it years ago. It's a sickness for your, your muscles. They just quit working in your esophagus. I mean, the last doctor that I went to over a year ago, because I felt like it was coming back, the doctor had me swallow something, and, and I couldn't swallow. It was going down real slow. An intern doctor was there. So the doctor, my doctor was looking at it. His intern was there. And the intern goes, how does this, how does this guy survive during the week? <laughs> that wasn't a smart doctor. I was standing right there. When I got this sickness, man, I was trying this and trying that. And, man, I remember going to Chinatown. I went to Chinatown. Someone said, go to Chinatown. They got all the remedies. They, they got it. So, man, I'm at Chinatown, and they, make, they put a bunch of uh, um, roots in there and plants in there, and they, they, they blended it all up. They said, drink it. This will clear up your esophagus. I said, sir, you're missing the whole point. I can't swallow. <laughs> you got to get this substance down. It's going to just make everything new. Lie. And I tried to drink it. I tried. And you guys can fill in the blanks if you think you know what happened. Just kind of. And you're about to eat in a little bit, so just fill in the blanks. I start to drive home. I say, God, I'm done. I don't know what to do anymore. What are you trying to show me here? And the Holy Spirit said, I got you, Robert. Here's the wisdom. I said, what is it? And I was driving back from Los Angeles with Veronica's dad, me and him, just driving back from L.A. I said, God, what do you want to do? He said, I'm trying to teach you to rely on me 100%. I'm teaching you faith right now. I said, what else, God? What else? What's the wisdom in this sickness now? What is it? He said, I'm also birthing out a healing ministry. I got to get you to sympathize that when you even hear of somebody that's sick in your church, that you can't sleep until you go visit them at the hospital, until you go pray with them, until the team gets there. I'm building sympathy. I'm building apathetic for people that are sick. And man, I got it. When I hear of somebody that's sick now, my heart just starts racing towards that family and racing toward. But that was the wisdom that I needed in that situation. I don't need necessarily an escape in the middle of my trial. I need wisdom. How do I navigate through this problem? What's the wisdom? How many want this wisdom? This wisdom in James chapter 1, I want you to write this down. What does this word mean, wisdom, in the Greek? Wisdom in James 1, the Greek word is Sophia. Someone say Sophia. Do we have any Sophias in the house? I guess that's an old school name, I guess. Oh, okay. 9 o'clock didn't have one either. I was going to say a special blessing for it, but there's no Sophias. Okay. What does wisdom mean? Write this down. God-given discernment regarding the practical issues of life. I need wisdom. What is wisdom? God-given 
discernment regarding the practical issues of life. How many want the discernment that comes from heaven? How many want discernment that only God can give? One of the issues is, myself included, we have too many Christians that are walking blindly with no discernment. They do not know what God is doing at the moment. They're walking blindly. I have good news. You don't have to walk this world blindly. You don't have to be guessing at things. God has all the answers. He has the infinite wisdom. That discernment, what does that word discernment mean? So pastor, I don't even know what that means. Look what discernment means. The skill of being able to grasp and comprehend what is ups obscure, what's unclear, one's, what's uncertain, what's hazy. A lot of times when you're trying to make a business decision, you're in a trouble trying to make a decision, it's foggy. How many of you have ever been trying to make a decision and you're just like, what do I do? What do I, it's foggy, it's hazy. Discernment is to develop a skill you can see clearly through the fog. And who's the skilled one? His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the skilled one. He has the infinite wisdom that we need to navigate through this tough situation, to navigate through this hazy situation. So if you want this discernment, you want this wisdom, jot this down. How do we get this wisdom? Number one. James teaches us in James 1, 5. You need wisdom? What do we do? What do we do? You need wisdom? Ask God. He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. How do you get wisdom? We ask God. Holy Spirit convicted me yesterday. I was studying and I said, God, how much time do I spend asking for wisdom? And I was just sitting there in my office there yesterday studying. I'm like, man, I hardly ask for that. The escape prayer, I got that prayer down. Get me out of here. I got that down. Lord, bless me. Got that down. But now, Lord, would you give me wisdom? I want everyone to bow their heads. We're going to practice it right now. Because some of you guys, if we don't do it now, you're not going to do it. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Can we just do that? Ask God for wisdom. Go ahead. I want you to do it. Say, God, give me wisdom. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Some of us, it's the first time. Give me wisdom for my kids this week as they get back to school. Lord, give me wisdom. As Kurt was mentioned, over my finances, my giving and tithe, give me wisdom on that. Lord, give me wisdom with my business. Give me wisdom with my daughter. Give me wisdom with my son. Lord, give me wisdom in this relationship that I'm in. Should I continue dating this person or should I back off? Lord, give me wisdom in this relationship. Lord, give me wisdom in my marriage right now. Lord, give us wisdom for this church right now. Ask the Lord. He wants, he's waiting to give it to you. God's wisdom is infinite. Look at the scripture, Psalms 147, verse 5. Great is our majestic and mighty Lord, and abundant in strength. His understanding is inexhaustible. You can't exhaust the wisdom and understanding of God. It's infinite. This is Psalms 147, verse 5. His understanding is inexhaustible. It's infinite. It's a boundless. So who gets wisdom? All those who ask God. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock on the door and it will be open. Intimate time with God. That intimate time with the Lord. That time of prayer and seeking the face of God. In that moment, he's going to download wisdom. I love this statement. To get wisdom from God, we need to spend time with God. 
to get wisdom from God, we need to spend time with God. That's in our prayer time. That's in the reading of the word and studying scripture. I need to ask him, God. How are you going to ask him? You got to have the, that time. We're all busy. I get it. We're all crazy. We're like too busy. I wish America could just slow down for a second. I wish we could slow down. I lived in Fort Meade for a while, Florida, small town. And I, when I was there, I hated every second of it. Everything at 5 o'clock was shut down. The only restaurant, if you wanted to go eat at 7 o'clock, was McDonald's. That's it. They, they would tell you, go home and go eat dinner at home. <laughs> they learned how to just slow it down. What is your time of intimacy with God? What is it in the morning? Is it at night? Because in those moments is where he's going to download his divine wisdom. And then you ask him, Lord, give me wisdom. Here's number two, how we're going to get wisdom. So number one was what? How do you get wisdom? How do you get it? And how often should we ask? All day long. Driving the car, Lord, give me wisdom today as I go to work to deal with this crazy boss. Give me wisdom, God. Anybody got a crazy boss? You need a lot of wisdom, okay. Number two, what we ask. Number two, we walk with the wise. We ask God for wisdom. Number two, how do you get wisdom? We walk with the wise. Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Some of us are hanging out with too many fools. Too many fools around you. Who's a fool? Here's the definition of a fool. Someone that knows what to do and they don't do it. The Bible actually calls that James 2, he calls it sin. You ought to do something, you don't do it. For you, it's sin. Some of us are trying to become wise and we're hanging out with fools all day long. That's why discipleship is massive in your life right now. That's why joining a power of 12, it's not even an option. You got and I got to hang out with the wise. Those who hang out with the wise, you're going to become wiser. God has placed strategic people in your life to give you wisdom. He's assigned specific people to be in your circle to bring you wisdom. One of those people in my life is my father. I love talking to him, and at the same time, I'm terrified to talk to him. He's a man of great wisdom. So I remember one example. Uh, I, I preached like this. You know, I was preaching. He was sitting in the back. And um, this was about, I don't know, six months ago. And I'm preaching, right? And, and I was like, man, that was a great preaching. Now, you know when you feel something? You played sports and you just, you just had a good day, right? It just feels good. I just felt good. Everybody's telling me, man, you did a great job, Pastor. What a great, oh, thank you, man. Thank, thank, thanks be to God. I try to act all humble, you know. Thanks be to the Lord. Right, 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 right. So days gone by, and I was with my dad going down the 215 freeway by myself. Holy Spirit told me, ask your dad how you did on, on your preaching. I said, I don't want to, Holy Spirit. I'll just stay a fool. <laughs> See, wise people, they get to the point where they love correction. They finally get it. Because that's where we learn. We played sports, right? You played sports, Jackie. In baseball, I could go three for four. I, got, I had four at-bats, and I could get three hits, right? How many know sports? That's good. Any sports fans? Nod your head if you know baseball a little bit, okay. I get four at-bats, right. I get to the plate four times. I get three hits. I went three for four. High five me. I went three for four. This is what a good coach does. Hey, Robert, come on. 
And I remember playing at Chafee College. He was, that guy was crazy. Three for four. Oh, man, what a great game, right? Oh. Robert, you went three for four. Congratulations. But do you remember your second hit? I said, yeah. It was a ball outside. He goes, yeah, you swung at a ball. You got lucky. That pitcher was only pitching 85. You have a guy that throws 95, that's a strikeout. So with a good pitcher, you would have went two for four or one for four because you still swung at a bad pitch. So my dad, I said, Dad, how did I do last Sunday preaching? Because when you're wise, you're hanging out with wise people and you ask them questions. How did I do? Could I have done better? But a lot of times we're scared to ask a question because we don't want to be, right? Dad, how did I do? I was like, oh my gosh, here we go. He says, son, you did really good. You, you kept the scripture in context. Great job. But you were screaming too much. <laughs> I couldn't understand half the things you said. He told me, slow it down. Let people digest what you're saying. Allow a commercial break every so often. <laughs> you're too uh, uh, A fool will leave that conversation and say, oh, my dad is old school. He ain't into the spirit. A wise person, I looked at him. I said, you're right, Dad. He goes, listen to it. You'll see yourself screaming, listen to it. Don't you guys tape the thing over there in the back? <laughs> he goes, you see if I'm lying. Go listen to that thing. I went back and listened to it. It sounded like a crazy, crazy stuff. So, <laughs> I said, he's right. I need to slow it down. We need to ask God for wisdom. We got to walk with the wise. That's why a P12, you got to get into a P12. Our small Bibles, you got to get into that group. There's somebody there that's getting ready to pour wisdom inside of you. You're going to get some information that you would have not gotten that whole week if you haven't been in that Bible study. And number three, write this down. So number one, how do we get wisdom? What is it? What's number two? Oh, they're gay. Here's number three. Become a loyal follower of Jesus. Become a loyal follower of Jesus. God will always share his deepest secrets. God will always share divine wisdom to his loyal servants and followers. How do I know the pastor? Would, how do you know? Look at James chapter 1. Again, 6 through 8. He talks about having a divided loyalty. But when you ask, when you ask for what? When you ask for wisdom, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Verse 7. Such people, what such people? What is, it, what is the Bible talking about? What is that? What is that? What does such people mean there? Well, see who's paying attention. What does that mean, such people? Let's go back. No, let's just read it. Yeah, yeah, it's right here. A person with divided loyalty. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They are unstable in everything they do. Definition of loyal is this, unswerving in allegiance. How many unswerving followers do we have in the house? The word loyal means to be faithful in obedience with no deviance. There's no deviance. It's a loyal follower of Christ. The Bible says fornication is wrong, and we don't get involved in fornication. Psalms 97.10, you who love the Lord hate evil. 
you who love the Lord hate evil. He protects the lives of his godly people. He rescues it from the power of the wicked. So the loyal followers of Jesus, they're going to receive the secrets of heaven right now in these last days. He's raising up the last day Daniels in this generation where you could go to your company and give your boss wisdom and your boss says, where did you get that insight? And you're going to say, my boy Jesus. In my intimate time with Jesus, he, he showed me what you were going through. Boss, I know you're going through a lot. And all of a sudden, God gives you the word of knowledge to your boss. He gives you the word of knowledge to your, your school teacher at, 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 at the school. And where did you get that insight? That was my secret time with God. How many want the secrets of heaven to be downloaded right now? I, I want the wisdom. I'm looking at San Bernardino. How do we, how do we continue turning the city around? I'm in Pomona right now. I met with the mayor, and I'm trying, how do we fix some of these issues here? God, we need your wisdom. You can't be in church on Sunday at the bar on Friday and expect wisdom. It's not going to happen. I, I apologize. It's not going to happen. You can't be divided in your loyalty and expect the wisdom from God. It's not going to happen. And you know what? You know what else happens too. I've been there. You know what else happens? Real quick, real quick. I got so I got five pages of notes. We could be here till like three o'clock. This is what happens too when you're divided. Because I've been there, especially when I was in high school and college. I was really divided. You know what happens when you're divided? You'll get to the prayer time, but now you pray with no confidence. Because you're asking God to do something, and you were just with a girl two nights ago. So you go, you can't go to the throne boldly. You go to the throne like this. Lord, uh, I know I'm not the best Christian, Jesus. Can you help me? I know you told me not to go to the bar. I know I got drunk and I wrecked the car. Can you pray that when I go to court, they don't throw me in jail? So you go to the throne that way. That's okay. You go to the, but this is the thing. Faith has to be attached to your prayers. When there's no faith to your prayers, your prayers are not even going past the ceiling. So when you're, when you're loyal to God, you can go boldly. Not that you're perfect, but that you're a loyal father. Jesus, I'm asking for wisdom to guide the people. I'm asking for wisdom. And said, like, Lord, I know I was a bad person on Friday, but can you, can you watch my daughter tomorrow at school? Right? right? I've been there. So when you're divided, your prayers get weak. You can't look at people in the eye. You're trying to decide. You can't disciple because you know you're divided. You know you were watching porn two nights ago, and now you're praying at the altar. So now someone comes to the altar, and you're dealing with porn. I've been there. I was a high school leader in Florida, and I was dealing with lust. Yeah, I had just graduated high school, Sandra, and my youth pastor said, Robert, you know how to pray. Lead the prayer for the high school group. And I was in Florida. I said, okay. <laughs> this is what broke me. I was at the altar dealing with lust, just graduated high school. A high school student comes, and he tells me, I'm dealing with lust. I had sex the other day, and I did this. My parents don't even know. He's talking to a guy that's full of lust himself. And I looked at him. I said, I can't pray for you today. He's, what you mean? I said, I can't pray for you. And I call, I never forget. I called him. You can pray for this guy. And I took off to the side. And my pastor, Tony, is my youth pastor. He goes, what's wrong with you? I said, Pastor Tony, I'm struggling with lust. I can't pray for that kid. He goes, Robert, that's a good decision. Thank you for doing that. I want you transferring stuff to the kids. He said, but now let's get your stuff straight. Let's get your stuff handled so you could go before the Lord with boldness. So I had to confess all my sins to my youth pastor. 
He sat me down for about, I think, a couple of months till I got my thinking straight. I said, Tony, I'm ready to rock and roll now, buddy. Put me to preach. Put me to pray. Because I've decided to be a loyal follower of Jesus Christ. So let's go. How do we get wisdom? Ask. How do we get wisdom? Walk with the wise. Change your circle of influence. And number three, get sold out for God. Because the beginning of wisdom is the, is the fear, or the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9, 10, that's our last scripture. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. I want wisdom. I should have did this sermon the opposite. You got to get sold out to God. You got to fear him. You got to reverence the decisions you're making. The fear of God is the foundation of wisdom. So in closing, you're in this room tonight or this morning, this afternoon. I don't know what time it is no more. 1228. You're in this room this afternoon. You're watching us online. This is your day now to surrender everything to God. I got a disturbing text this morning at 6 a.m. I was at my house getting ready to come into the office. And Pastor Joe, our prison ministry pastor, Pastor Joe, he texted me at 6 o'clock. I'm like, Pastor, pray for my family. I said, what's going on? He said, my niece just passed away last night. I said, Pastor Joe, how old was she? 28. And he said, I was supposed to marry her in October with the fiance. She was engaged. I said, Pastor Joe, how did she, pa how did she pass? She said, she got an asthma attack last night. She couldn't breathe. She died. I was at 6 o'clock this morning. You guys, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed the next 15 minutes. Man, I want the wisdom. I want favor from God. This is the first step. If I had to do this message over again, I'm going to put this one. This is the first step. You got to surrender to God. You can't have a divided loyalty. It's either God or nothing. Yeah, he's that type of God. He won't take 50% of you. He'll only take 100. My wife won't take 50%. <laughs> you think if I told my wife, honey, I'm going to give you 50% of my love. Monday through Wednesday, you can do whatever you want. I am yours. But Thursday through Sunday, this is an open relationship. I want to sleep with other girls. Man. It's a military girl. She, she, she'd kill me. She would go old school. Are you kidding me? What kind of stupid statement is that? I want Monday through Wednesday, I'm hers. And some of us, we treat God that way. That's why the Bible says, you adulterers. You want to be friends with the world still and be a friend of mind. It doesn't work that way. You can't be a friend of the world and a friend of mine at the same time. We die to the flesh. We die to the desires of this world. And I'm out to please Jesus 100%. So here it goes. I want everybody to stand up. Nobody leaving. The only people that are really moving and walking around, those are our altar team. Just hang out for a few minutes. I'll dismiss you. I promise the next two minutes we're done. But sometimes when you leave, it causes a lot of distraction. The person next to you is trying to receive. You're gathering all your stuff. And I understand. You got to go to work. Go. I don't want you to get you fired. Go. If you're trying to get to Denny's, please. Denny's will be there. Just hang out. In and out ain't going nowhere. I want in and out today. Let's get in and out. I want in and out today. They didn't have that in Mexico. I want in and out. Okay. If you don't have to get to work, just hang out. Just stay in the presence of the Lord for a second. Stay in the presence. Here it goes. I'm going to count to three. You're saying, Pastor, man, I want to surrender to God. I want to give God my everything. I don't want the divided loyalty. 
I want this wisdom, I want this favor, I want this walk, I want eternity with you, God. You know who you are. And you're saying, I need to surrender. Maybe you're in this room. If you were to die today, where are you going? We just lost one of our members' niece, again, 28 years old, to an asthma attack. She's planning her wedding. Pastor Joe called me like three months ago. He said, hey, can I marry her? Can you witness it so you could sign it? They want me to marry her. I said, yeah, Pastor Joe, go marry your niece. That wedding is canceled. Her fiancé is devastated. He's devastated beyond words. And I'm asking you, are you right with God? If this were your last day on earth, you died today, are you 100% sure you're going to heaven? I'm going to count to three say, Pastor, I'm not sure. I want to give my life to God. I want to surrender. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. That's me, Pastor. When I count to three all across this auditorium, watching online, you're, you're at your home, you're at, you're at your workplace. Raise your hands when I count to three. I want Jesus. I want to surrender. I want to give my life to God. If I die today, I want to make sure that I'm right with God. That's me. When I count to three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Right now, raise your hands. So that's me, Pastor. I need to surrender. See the hands. See the hands. See the hands. Keep them. Keep them up. Keep them up. I like to see them. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. I'm just raise your hands. I see it here in the front. I see it. I see it. I see it, I see it. I see that hand, I see that hand. I see that hand, I see that hand over here, yeah. That's me, I want Jesus. I want to surrender everything to God. All those, I see the hand in the back, gray and black shirt. All those who just raise your hands. I want you to come forward. Come meet me down here in the front. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation today. A prayer to surrender everything to God. Come on down. Don't miss this opportunity, God. Don't miss this opportunity. Give your life to Jesus. Six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. Did you bring her up? Okay, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-three people, fifty-four. Yes. Maybe more online. Yeah, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six. Now, everybody that came up, this is what we're gonna do. Everybody that came up, look up here. Just for 20 or 30 seconds, look up here for a second. I'm going to say a prayer. What you're going to do, you're going to repeat after me. For some of you, this is your very first time. Coolest thing ever. Some of you guys, you're rededicating. You said, I, I have divided loyalty. I'm done. You're going to say this prayer after me. Right when we're done saying this prayer, you're going to hang out just for a couple minutes. You're going to talk to the person that's in front of you next to you, maybe behind you. We're going to exchange some info. We're going to help you with your walk with Christ. Because your next step now is joining. More people are coming at three. Another one, 55, 56, 57. Another three just came up. We're going to help you get into these classes. We're going to help you get into the power of 12. You're going to change your circle of influence. Some of us up here, we got some friends we got to say bye to. 
drugs, drinking, hanging out at different places. I, I don't do that anymore. I'm a follower of Jesus, okay? And we're going to help you with that. We're going to walk right next to you, and we're going to fight with you. Not fight like physical, fight with the devil. Fight. All right? Every head bow, every eyes closed. Every head bow, every eyes closed. You're watching us online. What do you do? You say the prayer right where you're at. After this prayer, you go to igotsaved.com. You're online, igotsaved.com. We'll contact you and help you with your walk with Christ, your discipleship process. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I am sorry, and I repent from all the sins I've done. Forgive me. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross for me. And from this day forward, I choose to serve you. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Set me free. Holy Spirit, fill me. I thank you, God. Today I'm a brand new person. I am on my way to heaven. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hang out for a couple of minutes. We're going to help you and get you connected. You guys, Pastor Marco, he'll be traveling back from TJ a little bit later. Pray for him and his wife. Wednesday, Pastor Marco will be preaching. You don't want to miss it. He has a great word from God this Wednesday. Don't miss it. We love you. If anybody needs additional prayer, come on down. We'd love to pray with you. If God is for you, who could come against you? Have a great rest of the week.